In this lesson, I'll show you a real neat method to solving polynomials of higher degrees. And specifically in this example, we'll look at one that is a quartic, but it can also be applied to a polynomial whose highest degree is six, eight, and so on. Now before I begin, this technique only works for polynomials whose highest degree is even. That's why I mentioned a quartic or a power of six polynomial, power of eight, and so on. And whose coefficients are the same when read either from left to right or right to left. This will make a lot more sense to you as we read the question, which reads, determine all real and complex roots for which this polynomial is equal to zero. Notice that the coefficients are one, negative six, five, negative six, and one. Reading this from left to right is the same as reading it from right to left. And if this is not the case for your question, ignore this video, ignore this technique. The very first thing that I want to do is divide each of the terms in this polynomial equation by x raised to a power that's half of the highest, in this case, four. So we'll divide each of these by x to the power of two. Here's what happens when you do this. Dividing that by x to the power of two, we get x to the power of two. Dividing this, we get negative six x, that becomes plus five, that becomes minus six over x, and finally plus one over x squared, and that's equal to zero. Now before we continue, I just wanna do something on the side here that will help us throughout the process, and this is necessary if you are to apply this trick to your question. Let's set the letter r equal to x plus one over x. Now it looks like they're not related, what I just wrote in purple and what we have in orange, but you'll see a connection as we manipulate what I just wrote here. Say I squared both sides of this purple equation. We would end up getting r squared is equal to x plus one over x raised to the power of two. And expanding this, we would get x squared plus x over x, which becomes one, and then multiplying this one in to the other expression, we get x over x again, plus one over x squared. Simplifying, this becomes two. So r squared is equal to that expression. Now let's link this idea to what we have in orange. In orange, I will group together this term, that term, and the constant. So I have x squared plus one over x squared plus five. And I'll group together the other remaining terms, where I have minus six x minus six over x is equal to zero. As you can see, this term and that term match these two. And if I were to rearrange this equation that's in purple by taking this plus two over to that side, we can actually replace those two terms with r squared minus two, because what you're left with on the right side matches those two terms. So I'll write down r squared minus two plus five. In addition, this part, if I were to factor out a negative six, I would get the expression that I set for r. Notice that they're the same. So I'll replace that part with r. If we rearrange this, we end up with a quadratic. And as you all know, quadratics can be solved using the quadratic formula. I'll use the quadratic formula that's found on my calculator just to expedite the process, because I'm assuming you already know how to apply the quadratic formula by hand. One as the first coefficient, negative six and three. We get two values for r, where r is equal to three plus the square root of six, and r is equal to three minus the square root of six. Remember that r is equal to x plus one over x. Therefore, I will replace r with what it's actually equal to and solve each of these individually. So we'll begin with that one. And I'll label this two for reference. I'll multiply both sides by x to clear the fraction. Rearranging, we end up with negative 
3 plus the square root of 6 x plus 1 is equal to 0. And again, we can use our calculator, since this is a quadratic, and replace the new coefficients into our calculator. So that's negative bracket 3 plus the square root of 6. And for c, that's 1. So one of our roots will be roughly 5.3 is equal to x. And another one of our roots will be 0 decimal 19 is equal to x. Remember, a quartic can have up to four roots. So we need to apply the same method now for the second equation. The expression should be almost identical, except that this should be minus. So let me just rewrite that. And applying those coefficients into our calculator, 1 negative bracket 3 minus the square root of 6 and positive 1 gives us two more roots, but these roots, unlike the first two, are imaginary. So you would have a root that is 3 minus the square root of 6 over, and feel free to write this down as an approximate number. So I'll just write it down as 0 0.28 plus 0 0.96i and 0 0.28 minus 0 0.96i, notice. And there you have it. Another technique that you can apply into your toolbox for solving polynomials, if you'd like another challenge, see if you can solve this problem on your own. And uh, if you run into any problems, you can write us in the comment section below and we'll gladly make another video showing you the solution to this sixth degree polynomial.